six to you have to go six to five to four type thing, right? Am I misremembering? Sorry, I was showing off my mug. I know, I saw you. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen. And I'm Jane. And we're Spiel Mill. And we've been going through our top 50 roll and writes of all time. And we're on to our number 11 to 20. Getting and good. We, getting good. Getting good. So we're very excited for this. Um, they're all good. I mean, we played, we played at least 150 roll and writes. Um, so this is the cream of the crop. When you're talking to our top 50, let alone our top 20. So this is very exciting. It is very exciting. Uh, some of the ones below this I love 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 but I still had to look up to remind myself how they play or information about them these I could talk about them all day any day we're getting into the ones that we've just we've either played a lot or they have just made such a impact on me that I just remember them really well and I'm interested to see how many like I think we have a lot of crossovers especially yeah. towards the top end of this list I suspect yeah but I'm curious about how many things that aren't crossovers but also how many things are just divergent from each other yeah um, like whether you know maybe it was in your 40s but it's in my top 10 or something like right. that or vice versa yeah so I think there's a few so anyway that's interesting so why don't we proceed what is your number 20 my number 20 is Welcome to Dino World. Oh, right. By James O'Connor from Alley Cat Games. And we we're just recently talking about this because it was Draw a Dinosaur Day. And uh, this is a great opportunity to draw a dinosaur. This is, to me, the real, um, the real roll and write of Dino World, um, even though it, they're not they're not related. So I think this is really the heir apparent to Dinosaur Island. I know that the folks who made Dinosaur Island made a specific roll and write version of it, but that has so much table presence and it's so chunky. It's just almost like a smaller game, but still a table game. Um, Welcome to Dino World really is a true roll and write, and you are drawing um, dinosaur pens, and you're drawing paths to those pens, and um, there's you know adjacency rules as there are in roll and write games, but you still have to make sure that your dinosaurs don't escape. Um, and it is a really fun, really satisfying way to kind of get a, a bite of. <laughs> Uh, the Dinosaur Island feeling. Yeah. It, you know, look, Dinosaur Island Roar and Write's a fantastic game. It's just not necessarily a pure Roar and Write. Uh, roll and Write. Yeah. It's a pure Roar and Write. <laughs> so, and interestingly, I think that this was a Gen Cant winner. Oh, was it? Yeah, or, or entry um, okay. that then got published. So I can see, I, ho I, I hope it won. It's amazing. Yeah, yes. it's really fun. So that's my number 20. Gen Cant. So that was actually a crossover. I was in my 30s, I mm -hmm. think. Um, so that's yeah. a good choice. And this next game is also a crossover, I think, from your last set in the 20s. Okay. And that is Hermagor Market. Um, yes. This is a game from, let me get his name right, Emmanuel Ornella and uh, Mind the Move uh, Games. And, uh, you know, he's, I don't know if you know this, but uh, we have a game from him, uh, Il Principe. What? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. And he just had a game on Kickstarter uh, called Future Energy, which Queen Games is making as yeah. part of their eco line. We loved Il Principe. That mm -hmm. was one of the my entry-level games, or entry games. That was a game that we played when I was really new yeah. to the hobby and just loved it. Yeah, we really liked that one. We got it on clearance, and yeah. um, we like it, though, and it's really good. So, anyway, uh, in Hermagor Market, you're rolling dice. You're rolling three six-sided dice, and... The dice will help dictate what resources you can get, like um, you can, and how many you get. You can get four silk or five silk, or you know, um, uh, whatever in that regard, or four diamonds um, out of different uh, boot stalls at a market. And then you're gonna use those resources. You have a map of a of a area, and you go from town to town selling those resources. And it's a really min-max kind of game where mm -hmm. you're trying to minimize the cost of your travel and the cost of what you're spending on resources while maximizing uh, what you're getting for them when you go from town to town because every town's different in what you can sell and you have to sell it in certain combinations. So like you're like trying to maximize your ability to travel to a town where you can sell the most that you can sell 
while having resources left over at least or not too many of those though because mm -hmm. storage costs money too so there's kind of a lot going on in that respect for a roll and write it's really quite thought through really quite sophisticated and i really like it um it's uh there's and it comes with variants that you can play where the market uh, the market prices for the different items can vary uh, which can you know depending on how those variants are set up uh really affects the gameplay quite a bit so yep Yep. Um, really like this one. Highly recommend it. It's a print and play. It's available. You can get login access to a generator, which then you can make up, print out as many different towns, maps, and you know, uh, play maps as you as you want, basically, um, using different scoring mechanisms. So it's neat. Um, I really highly recommend it. Yeah, and I want to just call out that that's that neat feature of role of um, print and plays is that we've got a couple of games like this where you can generate a, a map. We actually, we can, we do it for um, uh, cartographers where we can generate maps for cartographers, mm -hmm. but what a great way to really maximize a roll and write uh, game to be able to, you know, create your own maps online and print them out and then play it. You get so much mileage out of that. It's such a great way to, to do it. Yeah. Sunshine cities, did that as mm -hmm. well so mm -hmm. you know you can get a lot out of the game um print and play just gives you a lot of options it sure so, does yeah um mm -hmm. anyway that's my number 20. fantastic my number 19 is also a crossover i believe from your last list and that is super skill pinball mm. i specifically put the holiday version on here but that's just because i really love holiday games um we really kind of go to town every every christmas every december on holiday games um because we love a theme <laughs> um and but in general super skill pinball is amazing it just feels like a pinball game you know yeah. your ball is bouncing around from you know bumper to bumper and racking up those points as fast as you can do it uh and some of them are quite long and kind of crunchy there's a lot of accounting which can be kind of a negative but i don't know how you could get that same sense of a of a pinball game without having some heavy accounting because it's that like ding 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 yeah. ding 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 point generator right and yeah, how do you simulate that with yeah, all the dings yeah exactly <laughs> you need the dings so um we don't really sit there with the bell though <laughs> oh, well, we could <laughs> it's an idea um but i love this super skill pinball it's from jeff Unglestein and whiz kids and there are um a bunch of different packs so the the um the first one had sort of 70s uh reminiscent of 70s uh pinball machines i think there was like a disco fever and a fantasy one but there's also some that take advantage of the ip like star wars star trek not star wars no just star trek um star trek and then there's the christmas ips mm -hmm. and uh, it's just it's great there's so many different versions of it each one's a little different, so you do have to kind of learn how to play the next one. But once you get the system down, there's not that much learning between game to games, which also, again, means you have a huge catalog of experiences at your fingertips with just this one game. So that is my number 19, Super Skill Pinball. Yeah, I really like that one. It is, you know, longer and, and it, yeah, it's fun. Now I'm sitting here thinking about can we get a pinball buzzer that we can hit every time we <laughs> score a point? That'd be amazing. <laughs> For about five minutes. <laughs> and one of us would <laughs> throw it out of the room. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Next time we play, I'm just going to go ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so my number 19 <laughs> is a game I don't think has come up yet. Um, and I think this one's really fun. It's a newer game that we got more recently. And this is uh, Delicious from Stephen and Edward Eduardo Baroff um, and Pencil First Games. Um, and this is a flip and, and, and write game. Um, and it's really fun. I just really like it a lot. It's got a, you got a little sheet of a garden board and um, a little sideboard, uh, which is primarily for fruit. And your the cards come up and they have multiple things on the card and you can either uh, write in a vegetable or a fruit or or sometimes it's a tool and you can use the tool and different parts of the map have tools on them and you can write in uh, whatever you want where those tools are um, and that's uh, the it's a 
quick, neat, fun game. And I just really enjoy it. Um, very satisfied with this one. So I don't think it made my list. Uh oh. You've played it a lot solo, mm -hmm. a lot more solo, and I think that's why it just it just didn't rise above um, it, for me. But now that you say it, it's a super cozy theme. It is really, uh, yeah. it's a lovely little game. It's a lovely art. Um, mm -hmm. When I was thinking about this game and I was thinking about, uh, there's a couple other games on my list coming up that have really nice art. And one thing about the ball and rights is you don't always get that. Mm -hmm. um, so the theme really comes through in the art and I really enjoy this game just a ton. And solo, it's really fun. It plays pretty much the same as it does multiplayer. And uh, I don't know. I, I highly recommend it. If you have a chance to get it, Delicious from Pencil First Games. My number 19. Yeah, I think it's a, a mistake that it's not on my list. Mm. Um, but next year. Um, all right. So that was a great choice. My number 18, and I'm not changing it, even though I missed putting that on there, is also a crossover. And it's the football slash baseball mm. highlights. The dice, not the dice game. Yeah, the, yeah, dice, the dice game. game yeah. Football highlights the dice game. Baseball highlights the dice game. Um, it is combo-tastic. It is bonus city central. I love this game so much. Ah, uh, this is, again, it's another one of those rolling rights that when I think about it, I can just feel like the little dopamine releasers in my brain going, yes, let's play that. <laughs> but they also feel, feel thematic. So the football game you know you've got your offense and your defense and you're moving the ball down the field yep. and or i'm sorry not your offense and your defense your running game and your passing game and you're moving the ball down the field and of course the passing game is much slower but there's a lot more bonuses and the passing game can get you a lot of yards really quick um, but there's oftentimes a defense will cut cut big yardage off of your passing game so um it just i love them and i love them as a way to kind of wring the most out of a day and the experience. So during football season, playing, you know, Notre Dame and, which I know has nothing to do with football, but it does in our mind, um, <laughs> playing Notre Dame and football highlights and just feeling like, you know, and then watching a football game and just feeling like, okay, yeah, like this is, this is football Saturday or football Sunday. We like our theme a lot. We do like our theme a lot. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, that is my number 18. Oh, I didn't mention it was, um, it's by Ian Sebastian, uh, Ian Sebastian Bach and Mike Fitzgerald. Highly recommend these games. I was trying to read the And Eagle Griffin. I was trying to read my next pick. Um, <laughs> My number 18 is a really fun game, and this is one where uh, some fan contributions really take it up a notch for me. And this is Metro X. Mm. Um, this is a roll and write route building, route completing game, really. You're, you have a bunch of like subway routes, and you get a certain, it's a flip and write, and you get a certain number that you can fill in a route, and you're trying to fill in these routes in a consecutive order, but they crisscross and stuff and share bubbles and stuff and that can sort of create blockage for you like where you end up with little yeah. holes between lines and stuff like that it's really interesting and then the fan contributions are fantastic because you get all kinds of maps yeah. from Gothenburg to you know Paris or whatever so you're not just stuck with the base game maps but you can uh, add these fan made maps and there's a, like 15 of them mm -hmm. or 20 of them available on BGG um, and get even more enjoyment out of it. So that's really fun. That is a great choice. I do love that. I love the fan-made maps, um, probably more than the original map. Um, map, not game, but just like the map. The fan-made ones, you know, we're enjoying going all over the world and we're picking our picking yeah. our city based on like what, what you know, based murder mystery theme. show we're watching. <laughs> 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 Are we watching a Swedish mystery? Well, maybe we should play Gothenburg. Um, so yeah, that's a that's a great choice. So that's designed by Hisashi Hayashi, mm -hmm. um, and Okazu Brand uh, is where the is the publisher. And um, I do highly recommend it. Something you can get from any uh, game store, or Amazon, or something. Uh, really fun. So I highly recommend Metro X. My number eighteen. Excellent choice. My number seventeen is um, actually the rolling right of a. Um, bigger table game and that is Alhambra 
uh, mm. Roll and Write. Not the dice game, but Roll and Write by Dirk Hen from Queen Games. And it's a really good one. Wow, when we were when we were stuck not being able to play table games for a long time, just being able to get Alhambra, this version, to the table felt so satisfying. You know, you're 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 supposed to pass dice, but we had a system for that <laughs> since we couldn't couldn't sit at the same place. But you know, you basically have two dice that you rolled and two dice that your opponent rolled and a grid, and you have to pick a building where they intersect. And then, much like the um, original Alhambra, you're trying to um, have the majority of a certain type of building, um, and it and then you, you get bonuses for filling out a column and row and things like that. But it's just really well done. It's a really good. Um, roll and write implementation of one of our, our top, I don't know, top 50, probably top 50, top 100 certainly games. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I really like the dice passing mechanism in this. I think it's quite uh, fun. Until you're passing <laughs> the blue four and the red or yellow five back, <laughs> back, 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 back. back. Nobody back wants. <laughs> Nobody wants it right now. Nobody <laughs> wants it. <laughs> But that goes away eventually. It does. It does. But it's, I mean, that's good. Like eventually, sometimes you're just like, I, I got to take that because I can't, you know, I need mm -hmm. something else and I got to get rid of these dice or. And it has dice uh, yeah. manipulation. So you're able to mm -hmm. tweak things mm -hmm. enough to get what you want usually. Um, and, or at least something, you know, that at least is advantageous. Work, yeah. yeah. Um, and and uh, the game's a lot about that. Maximizing uh, what you're how you're using your dice. So. It does have the um, the dummy third player, Dirk, or Dirka, uh, or Dirka depending, um, which is a little bit of overhead um, if mm -hmm. you're playing two person. But, you know, that's our only choice. We don't, I don't mind. If it makes a game playable, um, I'm happy to do that. And yeah, it's, it's not a good too bad. Way. It's, it's a, not too bad. It's a good way to make sure the game doesn't, um, has a little bit of, of, variability in it that it's not just like us slugging it out or or being care bears and leaving the other one alone you know and i should say that taking their turn is very easy you just roll a couple dice find on the grid what building it is and that's mark that off yeah, yeah. oh so yeah it's, it's, it's really quite simple it is quite simple yeah so i think it's a it's a good pick I, uh, yeah all right great so that's my number 17. all right my number 17 is another print and play game um and this one's really neat and I'm, uh, because there's a standalone version, but there's also a legacy version. This was on your list much earlier. And that's Ada Lovelace and the Legacy of the Analytical Engine, which is the legacy version. And the Consulting Mathematician, mathematician is the standalone version. Um, and this is a really fun polyomino roll and write. And you're basically, uh, there's a whole story to the legacy game especially where you're traveling all over the world, trying to trace down this Mrs. X or Mr. X and, mm -hmm. you know, um, trying to, you know, stop them from whatever evil doings they're about. And, you know, you go from site to site and each site is like a different museum or something or a mansion. And you're going in and trying to surround the evidence um, and get as, collect as much of that as you can and that gets you different uh, points in that game, but also gives you rewards at the end of the game, at the end of the, uh, the whole campaign. Um, so it's a campaign of, I think, 11 games. Um, and it's just really fun. Uh, and at the end of each game, you get uh, to uh, modify your rondel, or you get a special power, a special ability. Uh, so there's a, a lot of, there is a legacy, a re, true a legacy element to it. Mm -hmm. The standalone version has a fan made, uh, Lord of the Rings uh, yeah, Hunt adaptation, the which is really, really fun. Um, and helps, you know, if you're looking for that thematic tie in, um, different from Ada Lovelace, like, you know, always looking for a good Lord of the Rings. And to be honest, that's a much better Lord of the Rings roll and write than the Lord of the Rings roll and write that it we is. bought. So, it um, is. Uh, it, you know, it's so good that as you started talking, I started regretting the fact that I didn't pack this to take with me to play on a plane tomorrow. And I think I'm going to add it to my stack yeah. of games, the hunt for Cimmerillion specifically. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It it's really a, good. Oh, it's fun. It's just fun. And it's nice to have a roll polygon rolling right. That's fun and easy to play on your own or together. And uh, 
It's really a solo game. I will say that. It is. It's, it it's is. definitely really a solo game. Um, but I, I do highly recommend it. And that's my number 18. My number 18, right? 17. 17. Ada Lovelace and the Legacy of the Analytical Machine. Wonderful. My number 16, I don't think I realized who designed it until I was uh, just putting it on my list here. But it is a Bruno Catala game. Um, and uh, Corentin Lebrat. Lebrat by from Pandasaurus. Blah, that's a mouthful. Sorry, um, and that is Trek Twelve. Um, we Trek Twelve. You have um, maps of mountains with circles in it, and ostensibly your mountain climbers. And so you have to progress on the mountain one of two ways: either by creating a group of the same numbers, or by creating a you know a straight um, numbers in a, in a row. Um, and then you score them by uh, adding together the value, the top value, and then the number down if they're a chain, or the value and the number of circles that you had that had that number in it. So you really want to favor higher numbers, but those higher numbers are really hard to get and you kind of run a risk. If you commit to it, you could end up with an orphan and those don't score. And it's, it's, there's a lot of thinking in this game and, um, it's really, really enjoyable. And we really, we played the, um, or we got the campaign, campaign game, um, legacy game campaign. I'm not sure what you would call it. Um, it's a campaign, it's yeah. a campaign, but it was really a nice, again, a nice way to get a little bit more um, juice out of a roll and write because it's something that we played, you know, from the beginning through like, oh, let's play the next chapter of this. And, um, you know, we got better as we went and you're unlocking more special powers and you're unlocking, you know, maps and cards and things like that. And it's really, uh, there's a lot to this game. Really love this game. So that is my number 16, Trek 12. All right. Good choice. Another crossover. Mm -hmm. All right. So my number 16 is from a team known for their roll and write games, actually. Mm -hmm. um, this is Fleet the Dice Game from Ben Pinchback and Matt Riddle. And um, yeah, um, what is it? Uh, I wrote down Eagle Griffin Games because they're publishing it, but it's Motor City Games or something is their small indie publisher. But anyway, it's available from Eagle Griffin Games. And um, this is just, you know, the theme is not my favorite. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not really into uh, fishing, but uh, the game is really fun. And, and that's the bottom line. Um, so it's nice to go sightseeing for some fish. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, you have the different boats. You try to get the boats and you get the bonuses. And if you play your cards right, you can... Um, get these extra boats off to the side, get extra points that way, or or maximize or increase the capacity of your boats in some cases. Um, it's got combos. It's got uh, sort of leveling up on the different tracks for the different types of boats. Uh, so it's got a lot going on. It's really fun. You get a lot of points. Um, and it comes with, you have cards, so you can start with special abilities um, and stuff like that. So it's really fun. I don't know. This is a chunky monkey of a roll and write. I love this game. Yeah. I might talk about this more later. Yeah, I, I figure because you really like this one mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I so, really but, do. That is my number 16, Fleet the Dice Game. <laughs> well, my number 15 is a crossover. I think, like you said, there's going to be a lot of crossovers from henceforth. Um, and that is Rolling Realms from Jamie Stegmeyer mm. and Stonemeyer Games. Um, and again, I think some of the some of the roll and writes that I like most and that, that find their way at the top of this list are ones that you get so much value from this tiny little thing. So, you know, every game you play three rounds and each round has three different cards uh, and the cards are based on on games. So it's like you, you have nine games um, per play of rolling realms that you're that you're sort of playing and I just love that experience of getting so much different variety in one quick, fairly quick, easy to play game. Um, some of the cards I like better than others. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of which one I don't like and I can't think of, think of it right now. There's some that don't work well for me or I'm not good at. And there's some that I really, really love. But 
again, there's that variability. So you're not playing the same game over and over. Um, the games feel familiar because you've got the like Rolling Realms implementation of Scythe or, or Viticulture. Um, and uh, this was, as you said previously, uh, uh, Jamie Stegmaier put together at the beginning of the pandemic because a lot of people weren't able to get out mm -hmm. and play games with their gaming group. And this was sort of a print and play experience. And we loved it. We had this. This was one of the first print and plays that we um, uh, roll and rights that we that we played. This was before we even really had I to. to say, Jamie Stegmaier does a great job of engaging with the fans. Mm -hmm. And, and on really this, does. he's like he's still playing games online via via like YouTube or whatever. Mm -hmm with the fans and coming up with new versions of Rolling Realms cards. Oh, there's so um, many Rolling Realms cards out there. We don't even have them all. I was looking recently and there's just a ton more. Um, and you know, he just announced the, the, the next version of Scythe Explorers and, or I think that's Expeditions? Expeditions? Or Explorer? I don't know. Those words are so common. I, I know, whatever them. it's called, whatever it's called. Um, and they've got a Rolling Realms promo pack to go with it immediately. So, yeah. so I just really like that. It's a game that can keep growing as well. Um, and I like that. So that is my number 15, Rolling Realms. Good choice. Good choice. Uh, my number 15, I think, has already been on your list as well. Uh, this is one. I really love the simplicity of this game. And I like the theme a lot, and even though it's obviously a bit abstract. And that is On Tour mm. from uh, All Player, formerly Board Game Tables. And uh, um, yeah, this is a great game. You're basically uh, flipping over some cards which show different... Uh, regions or states and states and um, then rolling a, a couple of 10 sided dice or 100 side D100 and getting a couple numbers and then writing those numbers in different states and then your goal is to create a tour route this is pretty abstract mind you where the numbers move in ascending order so from 1 to 100 or whatever um, but never down so it can't go 1 to 10, down to 5, and whatever, as it needs to be contiguous. And so that's the challenge. And it's actually a lot harder than it sounds. Um, but we, oh, I, really so much. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy this game. I love how easy it is to solo once again. I think um, uh, being able to solo some of these games is a nice perk. Um, and uh, But it also works. This is one that also works really well multiplayer and with yeah. large groups. It's so. super easy to teach, too. We've taught this to a lot of different people, and yeah. everyone gets it. Um, and, you know, we're able to get started playing on it really quickly. Yeah. may not do very well because <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. Um, but one of the – so there's two dice. There, there are two, in fact, ten-sided dice. Yeah. E making a hundred and so let's say you roll um, a two and a seven then you have to write in a 27 and a 72 mm -hmm. and that can be really frustrating because <laughs> you also have to put them in a certain place and you might really really need that 72 in the southwest but you cannot put it in the southwest right. you actually have to put it in new england you're up in the ones and ones and 20s in new england it's not going to work up there but you have to and so you have to find a way to like keep it out of your way and oh I'm gonna have to truncate my route I had a really good run going but now I gotta stop it and and uh you know just cut my losses and it's it's a it's a puzzle it's a yeah, real so puzzle. much of the game is understanding when to cut your losses and uh when to like try to bet on a difficult uh move yep so anyway that's uh, my number uh 15 on tour great well my number 14 pretty sure you already mentioned it um, but I'm going to gush over it. And that is Voyages <laughs> from Matthew Dunstan and Rory Muldoon. Another print and play. And Postmark Games. Did you know that Matthew Dunstan designed Guild of Merchant Explorers? Yeah. Did I know that? <laughs> I, I probably did. But <laughs> I, <laughs> the I little, found out watching another video of someone yeah, else. The little plastic castle is a surprise <laughs> every single time. And I am so excited by this fact because everybody loves that game right now. It's so hot. That was in a lot of people's top uh, games of 2023. And Voyages is such a fun roll and write. It is so great. Another one where there's like five different maps with the same mechanism, but you're basically rolling your, your three dice. One is gonna tell you direction, one is gonna tell you how far you go, and the other one is gonna give you some sort of bonus. And so again, it's like making the best out of those three numbers. You know, you may really, really, really wanna go straight down, but you can't this turn. So how are you going to, um, to, to get where you need to go? Is it worth 
you know, killing off one of your sailors to adjust that dice. Um, and it's very, uh, it's very puzzly in that way, but there's also lots of bonuses and, you know, almost every single turn you're getting something, you're getting something that's going to either build your engine or help you score points. And so it's just a really satisfying game because every turn feels significant. And I think that's what I like about a lot of these rolling rights where there's like bonus upon bonus is that every turn feels significant. Like you did something. There's no like weight or building up to it. So, um, yeah. So voyages, I love that game. And that is my number 14. It's a good choice. Um, you threw me off when you said kill off your sailors. I just thought of it as using them. <laughs> what do you, what do you, <laughs> yeah, but they go away. What do you do? Like leave them on the island or throw them overboard and they swim away? They're drunk in the cabin. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Or they're tired out. They're asleep. <laughs> I, I've been killing my sailors. Oh, my God. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the trail of blood. <laughs> I was wondering why the blood was all over the place. Uh. <laughs> all right. So my number 14 is a lot less violent than her number 14. <laughs> and <laughs> um, it involves killing neighborhoods. It's welcome to. <laughs> only in the zombie version, right? Yes, only in the zombie version. <laughs> <laughs> so Welcome To is kind of a really well-known roll and write as it comes, and it's really fun. It's real simple. Flip and write, flip over some cards, write a number in a house, keep doing that. Try to get sequential house patterns and street patterns and uh, get bonus points for different things, and for finishing your parks, for uh, matching with your pools, and whatever you're trying to do. So... Um, I just really like it. I think I love the all the different theme versions of Welcome To. So, you know, we have the Christmas and we have the Halloween and we have the zombie one. And that gives us something to play for every occasion. And who doesn't love that? Well, we love that because we love theme. So um, we really love that. And I just, it's just a fun game. And again, this is another game you can play with any number of people. Any number of people. Give us all your masses. <laughs> we'll play Welcome To with them. So, I forgot to put this on my list. Oh, no. Ah, this is a much bigger gaffe than the last one. This absolutely is like top 20. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. <laughs> the thing is like, segmenting your roll and rights from your other games is really hard there's nothing in bgg that says this is a roll and write so we had to kind of manually do well, it there's a tag but it's not consistently applied and there's a it's a welcome to would be a flip and write tag which was a different tag mm. you know i didn't so. even try the tags uh because i mm. have not had luck with them um and maybe they've gotten better but the last couple times i've tried to find something by using that tag it's been not not Perfect. I had so. to go through very several versions where I grabbed the roll and rights. I was like, oh, it didn't include the flipping rights. Oh, and that didn't include all the print and plays that don't have any tags. <laughs> well, I went through all uh, six, seven hundred games that we've played. Mm -hmm. And if it was a roll and write, I put a little check mark in yeah. the column and then just the, sorted I missed, by that. What did I miss? I missed something. Uh, restaurant entrepreneur. Yeah, but th so. that's very... That was not the most efficient way to do it because clearly on the I've already missed two and welcome to would have been up there. So, yep. well, oh well, take it with a grain of salt. I'm gonna have an outline, not a list. So 10A is this, <laughs> and 10B is that. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, my 13 on my imperfect list is uh, Dice Kingdoms of Valeria by Levi Moat. Um, this is a new one to us. Yes. Um, and I really like it. Um, it is, it's not a print and play, although our first version was a print and play. It just, it, we backed it on Kickstarter. Um, but it's got, it's got a lot going on. And I love Roll and Rights where you've got different sections. Like there's a map that you're moving through and you're uh, marshalling your defenses and you're recruiting people and you're fighting monsters. And there's a lot happening in this game. At the end of it, it becomes a little bit of a race, but so do half the games I love, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we were just talking about Tabanusi and that, that can be a race <laughs> at the end, right? So, yeah. um, 
so yeah, so Voyages, or not Voyages, Dice Kingdoms of Valeria is set in the Valerian universe, and there's, there's a lot of uh, games. Um, it's a card, what do you call that? Flip and write? No, the card game, the the, the collectible card game. Oh, uh, yeah. the, the Valeria, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, it's set in that universe, um, but it's obviously, it's a it's a roll and write. Um, but it's, it's a not really, a flip and write, what was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> but it's a really good roll and write, again, yeah. with lots going on, you know, you are there are some terms where your turns where you're building to something but in those turns you're almost always also getting a reward over here and so i like that sort of multi-dimensional nature of each turn where you know in these short very games very combo tastic it is very combo tastic um in these short ish games it's not that short but you really want to feel like you're doing something all the time um yeah and so that is my number 13. Dice For me, it gives a, it gives me a very light Hadrian's Wall feel. Yes. Yep. So for me, you know, um, I don't want to necessarily oversell it, but I really like it. So. Yep. All, All right. right. Um, this is my second game in this ten, from Motor City GameWorks, and that is Three Sisters. Oh. Um, so I did Pleat the Dice game, and um, Three Sisters is from the same team. And it is a fantastic roll and write with a fantastic theme. Who doesn't love gardening with beans and corn and s pumpkin? <laughs> and, and combos. <laughs> and composting and having an apiary and mm -hmm. blackberries and apples and pears and you doing all kinds of stuff. And it's so fun. It's combo-tastic. Uh, you really do, uh, you play for those bonuses, you go to the shed and get the special rewards, uh, just so fun. And it is, it's got a neat rondelle system at its, at its center, and you roll the dice, you put them on the rondelle, and then you draft from each slot, and which slot you dra which die you draft, and from which slot depends on which actions you get to do, um, but also which sections of your garden you get to plant or water, mm -hmm. and oh, it's just so fun. Um, I really enjoy this one, so really not much else to say about it except it is fantastic. And if you like, I think the hardest thing and the, the biggest negative I've ever heard about is that you get so many combos that it can be hard to keep track of. Yes, that is true. <laughs> I know that I always forget some. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this game, and I think um, this game in particular, is that the first couple times I played it, I played it like like straight, like, okay, I'm doing this, and then I'm doing that. And I wasn't really working on building an engine and building those combos and trying to, like, wring the life out of every yeah. turn. And, you know, it's like the difference between ending with, like, oh, 30 points or 300. Um, and once I kind of got my, my, my mojo going with this game, you can just really get so much done and have so yeah. much happen. Um, and it getting figuring out that 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 puzzle how to how to sort of crack that code is really exciting yeah early in the game could feel really open-ended like I don't know where to start you know but uh, you, it really comes together mm -hmm. after a while so yep anyway my 13 three sisters Modi City game works excellent well my number 12 is um, a game by uh, the designer of one of my absolute favorite games um, Richard Garfield and Ooh. Aaliyah Games, and that is Dungeons, Dice, and Danger. Nice. Um, this is, and I think you've already talked about this, but it's sort of a dungeon crawl. You're working your way through a dungeon. The numbers are pre-printed. You roll the dice. You have to fill in a box that has that number in it. But, of course, you're trying to go on a path. So um, those paths are going to get you where you need to go to score, to score, to fight the monsters, to um, build your engine, to do all the things you need to do. Um, and there's there's uh, almost never a turn where you can't use any dice. And there's a couple of things um, like special powers that will help you overcome that one random time that you can't. But that's not the hard part. The hard part is getting the numbers to do what you want them to do, <laughs> not to be able to play one. And it's really clever. There's a lot going on. on each map is a little bit different. I think it came with like three different maps. Um, and uh, it just feels, it feels dungeon crawly to me. It feels like a dungeon crawl. Um, you're building up to be able to fight the monsters. You can't fight them until you get to a certain, you know, certain point. And I just really love this game. Mm -hmm. It's got cute art. Um, it's not 
overly flourishy art, but you know, for a, a you know a small map, there's a lot going on there. And it's got four maps with different um, foes and different dungeons and different bosses. Um, so there's kind of quite a bit of variety in there. Yep, different special powers, different yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, really great. So I. I just really enjoy this game and I highly recommend it, especially if you like dungeon crawls. This is a great way to get your dungeon crawl fix in a roll and write. And that is Dungeons, Dice and Danger. All right. My number 12 is a game that was is a crossover on this list. Ooh. And that is Alhambra Roll and Write yes. from Queen Games and Dirk Ken. Um, and we love Alhambra. Uh, it's a great game. And this gives you a good roll and write feel for it, um, I really think. and. It really does give you, it's a well-designed game. We talked about it quite a bit already, so I won't go into depth, but uh, it's got the dice passing mechanism at its core, um, but it's got the similar scoring as does Alhambra, the card game. So um, a card and tile game, whatever. <laughs> so I really like this game and um, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it that we haven't already said. So that's my number 12, Alhambra yeah. Roll Right. Excellent. All right. Excellent choice. Well, my number 11, it's a perfect segue to my number 11, which is also a roll and write version of a table game that we love. Mm -hmm. And that is Rajas of the Ganges, the dice game, um, or the dice charmer by Inca and Marcus Brand. And, um, it is, uh, and you've already talked about this a little bit, but, you know, it's got uh, a lot of the same things going on, same feel that Rajas of the Ganges does. Um, you've got the, the two scoring tracks, and when they meet, the game is over, and your score is really just that, like, that little bit in between there, like how much they cross over, um, which is such a clever mechanism. But you are, uh, you've, it's got a map area, much like the, the board game. And then you're trying to, um, you know, hire or utilize <laughs> different, uh, different people with, for their special skills and you're getting goods and selling goods and you're moving along the river. Um, and they j have just done such a great job of taking what is a really highly thematic and complex board game and, and making it work as a yeah. dice game um it is and this is one of the ones that has um um custom dice that we've made to put into our app so we can play it um so it'd be hard to do digitally if you don't do that but that really wasn't that hard uh and yeah rajas of the Don ganges the dice game i'm sorry i'm tired <laughs> i can hardly put a sentence together apparently that is my number 12 That's 11. Big. 11. <laughs> I think that was my 21 or something. Yeah, so. it was your last list, yeah. Yep. Um, my number 11 is one we probably played possibly possibly the most or definitely one of the most played roll and rights that we have, and that is Silver and Gold. Mm. And this is a really fun one. It's got a fun thing where you get to draw on your cards. Who doesn't like that? Um, so you just have dry erase pens and... Uh, you, there's a series of cards with different polyonimos on them and you have cards in front of you and you flip over one of the polyomino cards and you ha you get to draw that polyomino on the cards in front of you and you're trying to fill in the cards in front of you completely um, and as efficiently as possible. Um, once you do that, you get a new card uh, and you get points for the card that you finish. So um, you can finish, uh, if you get a lot of coins, you get to finish what's called a coin row, which is like four coins. And once you get there, you get uh, the first person to get there gets like six points. The second person gets five points and four points, etc. cetera. Um, and there's palm trees. If you mark off a palm tree, depending on how many palm trees are visible, you get that many points. Um, and it's just really quick, super quick, totally fun. And you get to draw on your cards. So Who designed this? Um, Phil think. Walker Harden. Okay, that's right. Praise I knew. be. Praise be. I knew it was him or Bruno Catala. I knew it was somebody that somebody loves. Um, this yeah. game hit it out of the park. This actually is probably close to our favorite Phil Walker Harding game. I We've certainly it played this. it more than anything else. Well, we've played it more, but it's just because it's so quick and light. But uh, Phil Walker Harding, I, I like his games. I think I like all of his games, but I don't love them all. Yeah. So. This one, though, is probably one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, this is a really good game. Just because it's light and quick doesn't mean it's not a good game. I mean, sometimes that that's what you need. 
that's what you want. Mm -hmm. There's times where you just can't manage a big game. So this is a, that was a great choice. Yep. All right. right. My number 11, silver and gold. All right. Well, that does it for our second to last, our penultimate 10 on our top 50. Penultimate. Yeah. That's exciting. Apparently I can still pull something out of my brain at this point. All right. Well, um, remember every day that you gain is a holiday. Bye. Bye.